let's focus our eyes of faith on Him. The, the psalmist says, Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence, Lord. Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your presence. That's us as we come into the presence of our God, wherever we are, as we come to acclaim, proclaim, I worship Him, and to walk in His light. Let's do that together as we worship Him. Firstly, singing from Mike's and Holiday for two weeks. So we've got, he's recorded the, the tunes and stuff. We've made some videos up as usual. So it's a, a song from CH4, which I don't recall as ever having here before, but I've certainly sung it elsewhere, and I'm sure you have, by Cool Siloam's Shady Rill. Let's worship God. <laughs> Let's come and worship that God in prayer together, shall we? Let's pray. Lord God, God of love, we adore you this morning. We have come together wherever we are to be in your presence, to worship you. We come in hope, with joy, with thanksgiving and praise. We come in the name of Jesus, the one who opened our eyes to your grace and filled our hearts with your love. Lord Jesus, we worship you. We rejoice in that love. Lord, today we acknowledge that we need that love. We need you close in your lives our lives. So we desire you today above all else. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you first loved us. We thank you that you've already come to us and invited us to know you, to be with you, to love you. So, Lord, as we accept again your invitation, we ask that you would draw close to us in your resurrection beauty, so that we can bow at your feet and say, Master. 
Lord, your majesty takes our breath away. Your love overwhelms us far and beyond anything that our tiny, finite minds can ever comprehend. And so we praise you that you are worthy of our commitment, worthy of our praise. We ask you to take your rightful place in our hearts, in our lives, to fill all of our lives with your love and strengthen us through your holiness and through your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Make us holy. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would help us to no longer play lip service to Jesus, to no longer fail to love those around us, to no longer fail to love our world, and no longer fail to love ourselves. Forgive us when we forget just how much the love of God has cost. Lord, we ask that you would draw close and renew us, enable us to love like you. Enable us to be so enthralled by you this week so that you, at the right center of our hearts, take your place so that our desires are to serve you with all of our hearts, souls, and minds, and strength. So, Lord God, Lord Jesus, today as we worship, unfurl your banner of love over us and make us lovely through your love. For we pray in your name. And here is now we join in your prayer, Lord Jesus. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now, I know summer feels like uh, months ago, and certainly with a chill this morning, uh, the heat of the sun seems long gone. But I want you to think for a moment about a lovely sunny day, young people, if you're watching, and those here and at home. When it's really sunny and the sun is beating down, what do we sometimes put on to give us some shade? What do you reach for? Well, maybe you reach for a hat with a skip, because the skip hat, or whatever it is, gives you some shade from the sun. What else do we maybe put on to keep us, our eyes shaded from the sun? Yep, sunglasses maybe we put on. Sunglasses as well as a hat. Maybe we put up an umbrella. Or maybe as we did, just last month we were down in Norfolk and it was actually really warm. And we were in a wee town called Hunstanton and it was roasting. So we sat under a tree. We sat under a tree and got some shade and had a rest. Hats, sunglasses, umbrellas, trees, whatever it is, to get us shade from the heat of the sun. Today, as we look at this book in the Bible that we're looking at, young people, called the Song of Songs, we're here today about a young girl who loves a young man, and she is out, and she's out in the heat of the sun, and she runs and hides, or well, goes back below the branches of a tree, because the branches give her shade. The branches protect her from the sun. And she says her young love is a bit like that tree because she runs into his arms and he protects her. He keeps her safe as well. And we read that book and when we think about that young man, we are thinking that that young man is like Jesus for us. And so, when we feel not the heat of the sun, but when we feel the, the world or we think, feel things are not right, or even when things are not good or are good, even when things are not well or, or things are well, we are encouraged to run into the arms of Jesus because he protects us from the mess of the world, protects us from our mess, our sin, and he gives us 
protection and security. So, if it's really warm, we put things on to give us shade and protection. Or we could run below the branches of a tree. Next time it is warm, and but we will yet, I'm afraid. Think about the protection and the love that Jesus gives us when we come close to him. I'm going to sing a modern song. It's a lyric, it will be sung for us so we can sing along. We'll stand to sing it here in church. It's called Beautiful Saviour. Thanks, John.
The reading this morning is from Song of Songs, and it's chapter 2. Beloved, I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. Lover, like a lily among thorns is my darling among the maidens. Beloved, like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my lover among the young men. I delight to sit in his shade, and his fruit is sweet to my taste. He has taken me to the banquet hall, and his banner over me is love. Strengthen me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am faint with love. His left arm is under my head, and his right arm embraces me. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and by the does of the field. Do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Listen, my lover, look, here he comes, leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My lover spoke and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, and come with me. See, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth, the season of singing has come. The, cooing, the cooing of doves is heard in our land. The fig tree forms its early fruit. The blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. Lover, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the hiding places on the mountainside, show me your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. Beloved, my lover is mine and I am his. He browses among the lilies. Until the day breaks and the shadows flee, turn, my lover, and be like a gazelle or like a young stag on the rugged hills. Amen. Thanks, Ian. Now, there's someone here that we'd like to introduce you to. Stephen is starting his training to become an ordained local minister today with us in St. Blaine's and Le Cropt. And he has the, the unfortunate task of having a placement with us over the next uh, while. Uh, so, Stephen, do come on up. I'm going to ask St Stephen to introduce himself. So, you come up and stand there, Stephen. And we'll stay apart. Just stick that one. Is it unmuted? Excellent. So, Stephen, tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, good, good morning. Is, uh, can you hear me okay, the mic on? Yeah. Hello, I'm S Stephen Miller, um, and I'm here this morning with my wife, Sandra. Um, I am, between us, we have four children, um, all in their, their 30s, and between us, we've got five and a half grandchildren. <laughs> um, I, I say five because the, the sixth one's on its way, and uh, we have them both sides of the Atlantic, actually. One family um, lives in America. Um, I come from Motherwell um, originally, but please do not hold that against me. Um, in terms of profession, I've been a teacher for 40 years, um, and latterly I was head teacher at Denny High School in Falkirk, uh, and I retired from there last October. Um, I think the other thing to say is I'm, I'm steeped in the, in the Church of Scotland. Mm -hmm. Uh, my father was a minister, so I'm a son of the manse. Uh, my mother is a reverend, so I actually have a reverend mother. Um, been an elder for, for 35 years, and until last week, actually, uh, I've been a church organist for the last 39 years. So it's almost like a, a, <laughs> a, a magnet. Um, I, I, I more often go to the, 
to the organ stool rather than the pew. But that's probably enough about me, Gary. Yeah. To be fair, Stephen did offer to play today, yeah, but uh, bless him. But I thought on his first day it would be a bit unfair. So maybe the next time Mike's on holiday, we'll have the pleasure of hearing Stephen play. So anyway, Stephen, you're training for the ordained local ministry. Yeah. Now, this is a difficult question, but can you tell us what that is that, what that will involve? Because folks are not, not really yeah. used to what that is. Yeah. And, you know, I've asked the, the Church of Scotland itself <laughs> what, it, what it involves, and I haven't got a clear question uh, or a clear answer um, about it. But um, training for a day local ministry, and it will take about two years, um, and it involves church placements such as, such as this, so I should be with you until about Easter um, next year, and I'll do the same next year, um, another placement. And at the same time, I'm studying at Aberdeen University, it's long distance, it's digital, I don't actually go there, uh, but, but training there for, for two years. In the third year, um, I should go to, um, it's a probationary year, lasting for, for the whole year in fact. What does that allow me to do? It allows me to do everything that an ordained minister such as Gary um, can do, but I won't be able to take um, charge of a parish, I, I'm not allowed to do that. Uh, so it may mean that I'm a, local min a locum minister, it may mean I'm a, an interim moderator, or given, the, um, given what's happening in the Church of Scotland with, with churches coming together in teams, I may become part of a team. So I don't know. That's, that's the, the long and the short of it. I don't know what it will eventually lead to. Um, but I believe I've been called by God um, to do this, so I'm, I'm, I'm willing to, to obey and, and go where He leads. So what happens in three years, I don't know. But as I say, I'm, I'm open to whoever, wherever that is. That's a brilliant answer. Well done, Stephen. You summed it up really well. F lastly, what, do you, what are you looking forward to, to learning as you're with us here in St. Blaine's and Lethcrop? Yeah, I mean, my, my, whole, my whole life is a kind of great reversal just now. Um, I've been used to marking other people's jotters for 40 years, <laughs> and now I'm back to, I'm back to being a, a student. And I'm... I'm looking forward to learning from you. I'm, I'm admiring your cross, and I'm looking at all the, the different sizes and, and shapes of, of people represented there. And individually, and as a church family, we all have our, our journeys, individual journeys and collective journeys. We all have our own stories. So I'm looking forward to learning from you. But in a great sense, you're going to be my teacher. I hope I have something to offer you, but you're going to be my teacher. So what I'm going to learn from you, I don't yet know. And in a sense, it'll be up to you. But I'm looking forward to being here. Um, thanks very much for the, the lovely warmth of welcome um, that we've both had today. And you don't know this, but you couldn't have picked a better song to sing next. All right. <laughs> because having been an organist for 39 years, I actually requested that we sing as a last time that I ever played, last week in Octorarder Parish Church, you're now about to sing this. Yeah, well, so you couldn't it. have welcomed me in a, in a greater way in, in song. But thanks very much, and I look forward to, to meeting more of you and being with you in the months ahead. Thank you very much. Brilliant, Stephen. Thank you so much. Thank you. We look forward to what you bring to us as well over this time. Thank you. Thanks, no worry. So let's sing that hymn then. It's How Great Thou Art.
Right, a bit of a, an imagination exercise for you at the beginning of the, today's sermon. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine you're walking through a large forest. You've been walking through this forest for days and days. It's dark and oppressive. You're lost. You get the feeling you've been wandering about for ages in circles. Every now and again, you can see a clearing in the forest. But when you go out into the clearing, the sun is so strong that you can't bear the heat. So you retire into the trees and keep going. Your food is gone. You're thirsty. You're drinking water off leaves and the stuff. And then suddenly you come across another clearing. But this one is different. In the middle of the clearing, you can see a different tree. And so you, you run across the clearing in the heat and get under the branches of this tree. You look up and you see the branches are full of red apples. You take one. You bite into the apple and streams of delicious apple juice fill your mouth. You can open your eyes if you did, if you closed them. If you can think your way into that kind of situation, into that kind of experience, then you're well on your way to understanding what the young woman in Song of Songs chapter 2 is feeling. Today we begin, uh, well, uh, we've started our studies in this strange book, a book where we are recognizing lots of different ways of understanding it, that it's a love story between celebrating human love and sexuality, but it's also a, a picture of the and a description of the divine love that Jesus has for his church. The divine love for Jesus and individuals like you and like me. We've tried to begin to understand what this book is about. We've heard the voice of a young woman and the voice of a young man. We've also heard the voice of some friends. There's lots of theories about who these people are. One of whom, one theory is that, of course, that the young man is Solomon and the young woman is a, is a woman in his harem. And he has picked her out to become one of his many wives. Another uh, understanding is we have, we have been looking at so far that it's a young man and a young woman from the country. She may or may not be in Solomon's harem, but she's definitely in love with this young country boy. Now, I'm not too sh sure how these different theories, how important they are for us as we understand this book but it certainly seems to be mostly about a young woman and a young, young, young man from the country. And as we've said before, there is a bit of a flow to the book. And as we come into chapter 2, we are coming into the, they're in the engagement phase of their relationship. It's, a, it's really a springtime romance with flowers in a forest and the like. We've already seen in chapter 1 that this young woman is anxious about her appearance. She's, all through the book, she's anxious about things. In chapter one, she was anxious about appearance. She'd been working out in the sun, working in her family's vineyard. The sun had weathered her and darkened her. And she was anxious that her young man would still love her. She was also anxious because she didn't know where her love was. And she asked directions and the like and found him towards the end of chapter one. We also heard the young man reassuring her of his love. I liken you, my darling, to a horse, which we reckon wasn't perhaps the best phrase to be, to be using, but certainly one of uh, Pharaoh's horses must have been beautiful and he gets away with it. But he reassures her of her beauty. Your cheeks are beautiful with earrings, your neck with strings of jewels. He reassures her of his love for her, no matter how she feels, no matter how she looks, or whatever. And that conversation is really carrying on as we start chapter two, the beginning of chapter, well, all of chapter, the beginning of chapter two is, a, is that 
conversation continuing. She says, I am the rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. She describes herself as being like a flower out in the valleys. Now, that sounds like she has got a bit more self-confidence about herself, despite the anxiety of chapter one, but it's not really that at all. Apparently, it's a bit more, again, of self-deprecation because these flowers were pretty commonplace, nothing special all over the place. So, she describes herself again as being ordinary, but he replies, as you would expect him to reply, in the same way as he did in chapter one. You are like a lily among thorns. We would use the phrase like a, was a, a rose between thorns or whatever, a rose between two thorns. She might feel herself common, like a common uh, lily or Sharon rose or whatever, but in his eyes, her beauty shines to him. She then speaks a, a beautiful law, well, or sings, really, can remember this is a song. She then speaks or sings a, a beautiful piece of, of lyric or song all about him. And she begins, like, a, like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my beloved among the young men. I delight to sit in his shade, and his fruit is sweet to my taste. Remember that thought experiment at the beginning, finding that apple tree in the midst of a dark forest, in the midst of a bright clearing where the sun was beating down, running to it and getting under the shade of its branches. She says he is like that for her. My love is like an apple tree among the trees, distinctive, fruitful, virile, and all the rest of it, standing out from these other trees. His fruit is sweet to my taste. The, the sun-weathered anxiety of chapter one is gone. You know, she's been out in the, the sun, getting beaten by the, its rays, but now she's sitting in the shade. protected by him, being fed by him. She delights in him and what he does for her. And of course, we turn our minds to Christ, to Jesus, the lover of our souls, having been weathered and battered by our sin and the, the sin of the world. Do we delight to be with him under his shade, receiving his goodness. Maybe you're turning, your, your thoughts are turning to Psalm 121, to the, the psalmist saying that the Lord is his shade who protects him from the sun and the moon. So we, like her, run to the shade of our Lord Jesus. We shelter under his canopy. We receive the refreshment he provides. Do you feel as if you need that type of shelter this morning? Is there something in your life that's like the sun beating down on you? You think, I can't get away from this thing. How can I get protection? How can I get shade from this? Then run towards him who is our shade, who protects and delights in you. She continues, let him lead me to the banquet hall and let his banner over me be love. Maybe you're thinking of the, the, wee, the wee old song that maybe you sung in Sunday school, his banner over me, his banner over me is love. Strengthen me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am faint with love. She wants him to draw her closer and closer and closer. She wants his banner to be over her. Julian Hardiman in his book says, can you, can you hear her desire? Do you sense the Holy Spirit 
awakening that desire in you for Jesus so that you desire Him above all else. So often we don't bring our anxieties to Christ. So often we don't run into His shade, His presence. Let's not settle for anything else, anything less than the riches, the refreshment, the fruit that He gives our souls. Again, remember Psalm 23, you refresh my soul, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, says David. Let him raise his banner over you. Now, think of, the, think of the banners that fluttered over a king's army in battle. As they walked into battle, the, the armies would have a, a, a flag or a banner showing the king's uh, coat of arms or whatever, who they belonged to. Even in wartime, the, 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 the colors getting carried into battle and how important they were, showing who they belonged to or the pendant that fluttered over the, the pavilion of a king. That's what this banner here is, is like. It's a symbol of authority and power. And she's saying, I want your banner of love to be over me. The modern-day equivalent says Philip Ryken, and I, I giggled when I read this, might be a girl wearing her boyfriend's football top. You know they go through that stage where they swap clothes, yes. We're living through that just now, and it made me laugh when I read Philip Ryken's uh, comment. But that's what it's like. She's saying to him, I want to be clothed in you. To know the love of Christ means submitting to him. Willingly, not being forced or coerced, but falling in love with him, submitting to his authority. The young woman says she is faint with love. She's love sick. How is your love for Christ this morning? She's love sick because she's seen how amazing he is. If we are struggling to love Christ, then look at what he has done. He is altogether lovely. He is worthy of our love. Julian Hardiman quotes the, the Puritan uh, John Owen, who writes these amazing words all about Christ. Lovely in his person. Lovely in his birth and incarnation. Lovely in the whole course of his life. Lovely in his death. Lovely in his whole in employment. Lovely in the glory and majesty. Lovely in all these supplies of grace. Lovely in all tender care. I've got a spelling mistake there. Power and wisdom. Lovely in all his ordinances. Lovely and glorious in the vengeance he takes. Lovely in the pardon he has purchased. All together lovely. That's our Lord. The young woman continues, his left arm is under my head. They are embracing. His right arm embraces me. He's got his arms around her. Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and by the does of the field, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. We are reminded that this is a book about physical love as well. About human sexuality. His arms are around her. His desire is to hold her close. But note, there's a moment of pausing. Do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. There's a sense that they're getting carried away. There's a sense that this love voiced might result in physical love experienced. But suddenly there's a pause. Because we would understand they're not married yet. A reminder that that physical act of love has a place. The place within marriage. Now we will talk more about this later in the book, but for now we pause and remind ourselves that as Philip Ryken says, sexual intimacy is one of the most powerful gifts 
created and given by God. But as Riken says, it's also dangerous. He says sex is like superglue. It's designed to form a lifetime bond between husband and wife. But when it's used the wrong way, it loses its power and ends up being like a, a post-it note that can be moved about. As I say, we'll come back to sexuality later in the book, but for now we see wisdom that true love really does wait. Now, that cuts across our culture where everybody wants everything now. Why should you wait? And we have to work out how we deal with that, how we deal with that with ourselves, how we deal with that with our children and all the rest of it. As I say, we'll come back to that later in the book. She continues, listen, my beloved, look, here he comes, leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. Why wait? Well, he is worth it. Sense his power, sense his nearness. The Song of Songs shows us a perfect picture of love and marriage. And it shows us in 2021, the perfect Lord Jesus who bounds towards us, who comes to us with the same vigor and power. He's made the first move. He has come to us. I just had this thought in my head about those horrible dances we used to have at school. Stephen, you'll know this, when you're teaching the Waynes at school and you're, you're lined up and the other, so all the boys are on one side of the gym hall and all the girls on the other side. And there's that horrific moment when you're that age where you have to cross over to choose and you know that your whole day is going to be shaped by what happens at this moment in time. But Jesus has come to, he has crossed that, not gym hall, that vastness of the universe to choose you and me. And he invites us into this relationship. And then she does something interesting. She then uses his words as she sings. My beloved spoke to me and said, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. See, the winter has passed, the rains are over and gone, flowers appear in the earth, the season of singing has come, the cooing of doves is heard in our land, the fig tree formed its early fruit, the blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. He's been speaking of the spring, the springtime romance continues. But she uses his words. She sings his words back to him. How important it is for us to know and sing the words of Jesus in our love, to hear his invitation, to allow his written word to soak deep into our souls so that we pray or sing or recount his words back to him, to show how his love has come deep into our soul. Let Jesus show you the, the wonders of creation, the wonders of love, the wonders of grace, the wonders of transformation, and then let that, those words become your praise back to him. We say it all the time, if you're struggling to know what to pray, then use God's word to help your prayers. Her long verses or paragraph or whatever you want to call it ends, and he speaks. My dove in the clefts of the rock and the hiding places on the mountain says, show me your face. Let me hear your voice for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. He speaks of finding his love in the cleft of a rock, sheltering. He invites her to be with him again. He wants to see her face. He wants to give protection to her, to get rid of the foxes and the like. He wants to hear her voice. Philip Riken says, Jesus is our bridegroom. He loves us with this kind of love. 
Sometimes we hide ourselves because we think we've messed up. We think, he can't possibly love me because I've done this and I've done that or I've, I've not done this or I've not done that. But here we see Jesus yearning, this young man yearning for his love. Here we see Jesus yearning for you. He delights to hear your voice. To you, to him, your face is lovely. How do we know this? Well, he, he died for you. He longs to protect and hold us. Why do we hide? Why do we spurn him so often? But yet we all do it. And so the young woman finishes her chapter. My beloved is mine and I am his. He browses among the lilies until the day breaks and the shadows flee. Turn, my beloved, and be like that gazelle or like a young stag in the rugged hill. She describes the man of her dreams. He is everything to her. My beloved is mine and I am his. Jesus is everything to us. He is our love. He is our beloved and he is mine. He is yours. He has chosen you and me to be his. He has turned his face towards us and he smiles with a love that should melt our heart. No matter your experience of love on earth, whether it's been good, bad, and different, whether you have, as a human being, hurt someone else or someone else has hurt you, or whether you've been unreliable, whether someone else has been unreliable, human beings know the pain of, of life. They even know the pain of singleness being alone, longing for someone, all those pains, all those longings can be satisfied in Christ. Julian Hardiman says, we can be sure that Christ has given himself to us completely, sharing his love with us sweetly in the moments of great pleasure. We can be sure of this, that Jesus has given himself to you to share his love sweetly and that this that is lasting treasure he will still be ours tomorrow and next year and forever he is ours i am his and he is mine all we have to do is to cross the clearing through the heat of the world and shelter in his arms. Amen. Let's begin to process that and to think that into our own lives, firstly by listening to Mike's organ recital, which is Pasha Bells. I'm probably saying that wrong, Stephen. Apologize. Something in D. Right. Canon in D major. Sorry, John, I've just moved it on. Is it going to work? You may have to put it back and put it forward.
Let's stand and stretch our legs. We thought about the, the dove in the cleft. Uh, let's sing of us being in the cleft, but not a cleft of the world, but the cleft, the shelter of Christ. As we sing the wonderful hymn, Rock of Ages Cleft for Me. But do sit down, let's come and pray, and uh, I'm going to ask you to pray for me this week, I've got a funeral on Tuesday, you'll know that I'm the sports chaplain to the, the university football team, well I've got to know the players over the years, the five or six years I've been doing that, got to know the management, and I've also got to know a lot of the fans and the folk who come, and I got to know one guy really quite well, his name was Jim, he was the former kit man to the, to the university team. And I used to run Jim to the games and stuff like that. But uh, Jim unfortunately passed away last uh, two weeks ago and his wife asked me to conduct the funeral. So I'm really quite anxious about this. It's on Tuesday. But it's also a great opportunity because I know there'll be folk from the university team, the managers coming, there'll be folk from the university will be there. So it's a great opportunity to, to also to talk about the hope that is in Christ. So I, I would covet your prayers. It's Tuesday uh, at 12 noon over in Logie Kirk. But anyway, let's come and pray for ourselves and pray for the world. Lord Jesus, we rejoice in you. We rejoice and thank you for your love. We rejoice in that acceptance of us. And today we open our lives fully to that love, fully to you. May your love surround us, hold us and affirm us and protect us. Lord, today we hear your voice and we answer your call. We open our lives to you as we ask that you would keep us close in that relationship. Help us to tune out the evil one who tries to tell us that we are not worthy of your love. Lord, if any here or at home feel as if they're caught in a dark forest, in a dark night, for any longing for dawn, 
for any suffering, for any fearing, wondering, or full of anxiety. Lord, may they be aware of your left arm under their head and your right arm coming round them. We thank you that you are you bring complete love to our lives. We thank you that you are trustworthy. We pray that you would love your church, that you would remind us of your love, that you would hold us close, wash us clean, and make us sparkle. We pray, Lord, for all who grieve, for all who have been bereaved and continue to live with bereavement. We pray that you would draw close and they would be blessed and comforted. We thank you for the privilege, Lord, of, of being at folks' funerals and celebrations. And we do pray for Tuesday. We pray for Elaine, Jim's wife, suffering herself in hospital at the present time. We pray for those from the university, players and former players who will come, that they will hear you speaking to them some way during that service. We continue to pray for our denomination as it seeks to plan for the future. We thank you for, for those stepping forward and answering your call to serve you in a denomination. We do pray for Stephen as he starts his training, Lord, that you would bless him, that you would ease any anxieties that he has, that you'd be with him and Sandra as they begin this new chapter, that you would prepare him, Lord, to serve you in your church. We pray for the presbytery who make decisions soon about churches, congregations, about buildings, that they will be led by you. We pray that they will be fair. And above all, Lord, we do pray that these changes will build your kingdom and help your church to reach out with the gospel to your world. Lord, as we give to you today from our hearts and from our wallets and bank accounts, we ask that you would use our offering, Lord, to to enable us and others to sing of your love and to reassure others of that love. For we pray in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let's close singing the hymn, Before the Throne of God Above.
So now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.